Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. And as you could see from the introduction today, we're going to be looking at the Vivo X6 Plus. Now you probably haven't heard of the Vivo brand. They're a Chinese company that are looking to make inroads into the Western markets. Now the X6 and the X6 Plus were announced recently. And as you can imagine, the X6 Plus is the bigger of the two devices. In fact, it has a 5.7 inch display. That's full HD, Super AMOLED. Now powering this phone is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 615, that's an octa-core processor, along with the Adreno 405 GPU. Then next to that you find 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of onboard storage. So we have Full HD, Super AMOLED, octa-core processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of onboard storage. This has got all the makings of being an excellent device. However, let's dig a bit deeper and see what we find out. So looking around the device, we have the 5.7 inch Full HD Super AMOLED display on the front. Uh, on the bottom are three capacitive keys that are not backlit. And of course at the top you have the front facing camera. Around the sides you have the volume rocker and the power button on the right hand side and the SIM tray card on the left hand side. Looking at the bottom of the device we find the single speaker grille, some holes for the microphone and a micro USB port. While at the top we find nothing other than the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Flipping the phone over, you'll see that you have the camera, the fingerprint reader, and the Vivo logo. So when you look at the back of this device, you'll see that it does bear a striking resemblance to another type of smartphone made by a company with a fruity logo. Now I'm sure that's pretty intentional by Vivo because this is aimed for the Chinese market and the way the Chinese market works is a bit different to how it is here in the West. So really when you're looking at this, okay, you have to admit, it's not original in its designing. Even these bars here at the top and the bottom are very, very similar to the iPhone. However, if we get past that, we can see what else we can see about this phone. Now, while this phone does use an octa-core processor, it's not a high-end octa-core processor. A high-end octa-core processor today would probably be using four Cortex-A72 cores and four Cortex-A53 cores. However, the Snapdragon 615 uses eight Cortex-A53 cores, which means it's gonna be slower than many of the other leading processors. So to test the performance, I ran some benchmarks. Now, the full benchmark results are in the written companion that goes along with this video, and you'll find that over at androidauthority.com. Now, just to give you an example of what kind of performance we can expect from this phone, I ran Geekbench 3. Now, the single core score for Geekbench 3 was 759, while the multi-core score was 3,161. Now, that score is actually slower than many of the octa-core phones I was testing in 2015, and in fact, it's slower than some of the Snapdragon 801 phones I've tested during 2015. So overall, this phone isn't a high-performing phone because of that uh, Snapdragon 615 processor. Now, if the performance of the 615 is a bit of a disappointment, its power efficiency isn't. This phone has a 3000 milliamp hour battery, and because of that Qualcomm 615 processor, you get excellent battery life. Now, unfortunately, there are no battery usage pages on the software on this version of Android that's running on this phone. So I've done some tests. Now, for example, I ran some 3D games, and according to my calculations, you can run 3D games for around four and a half hours on this phone. And that's quite impressive because there are other phones available that don't even give you four and a half hours of on-screen time in general before you even go near 3D gaming. Now, in fact, when you try to do lighter tasks like browsing the web and watching YouTube videos, I found that you could actually get over 15 hours of usage out of this phone, and that's quite amazing. Now, what that basically means is that you will really get a full day's battery life without any problems whatsoever, and depending on your usage, you may even get two days of battery life. So really, a thumbs up for Vivo for putting in such a big battery along with that power-efficient processor. Now, when it comes to charging the battery, Vivo has installed a piece of technology in this phone called Dual Engine Quick Charging. Now, basically, that's a variation of the different quick charging technologies that exist today. And the idea, of course, is that up to 80% the phone charges very quickly. Now, I did some charging tests, and this is what I found out. The phone overall takes two hours to charge, which isn't that quick. However, to get to 50%, it only takes 23 minutes, which, of course, is quite impressive. If you want to charge to 80%, that only takes 55 minutes. However, to go from 80% to 100% takes another 
hour or a little bit more than another hour. So you can see this quick charging technology is very good to 50% to 80%, you're gonna get there very quickly. However, a full charge is gonna take just over two hours. Now on the software side, we're dealing with FunTouch OS, and this is Vivo's custom version of Android based on Android 5.0.2 Lollipop. Now it really is quite different to stock Android. Again, it's because it's aimed at the Chinese market. For starters, there's no app drawer, but after that, a lot of the icons are more reminiscent of maybe the iOS interface rather than the stock Android interface. Also, there are some new pages to do with the fingerprint reader and to do with smart motions, and you can do a swipe up from the bottom as well. So there's quite a lot of different things going on here. And if you're not used to it, it does take a while to learn how to use this phone. Now, unfortunately, there are no Google services. That means you get no Gmail, no YouTube, and no Play Store. Now it is possible to install the Amazon App Store, which I did, and that, with that I was able to download and install many of the apps I've been using for my testing. Now it's also possible to download Google Play via Vivo's own App Store. Now I've done that and I have some success with it. I was able to install some apps, but a lot of apps kept giving me errors saying they were incompatible with the phone. So that's something to watch out for if you're buying this phone here in the West. And the two more things I want to mention. One is the fingerprint reader. The fingerprint reader on the Vivo X6 Plus is excellent. In fact, I would say it's just as good as the fingerprint reader that you find on the Huawei Mate S and the Huawei Mate 8. It really does open the phone quickly and you can just put your finger on the fingerprint reader and unlock the phone in one swift move and it's lightning fast. So that's a really good feature of this phone. Now on the other side, I'd like to mention the network coverage. This phone does not cover the networks that you need in the USA or that you need in Europe. So I was able to get 2G GSM, I was able to get 3G. However, with my carrier, I was unable to get 4G. Now as always, you should check the compatibility of a phone with your carrier before you go ahead with any purchase. Now the camera app that comes bundled with the Vivo X6 Plus is excellent. It's got a load of different range of modes, including HDR and panorama, and of course some automatic mode, but it also has a professional mode, which is really a manual mode. And in manual mode, you can change things like the shutter speed and the ISO settings and the white balance, but you can also do manual focusing. And it's quite good fun playing with the camera app and focusing in on things manually yourself. That's really good actually for close up shots I found. Having said that, the camera itself doesn't seem to take great photos. Now as a caveat, I must say that I've been taking these under a cloudy sky. During my time testing this phone, I haven't had a sunny day, so all the outdoor pictures are taken with a very heavy cloudy sky. Now knowing that, I could give the camera the benefit of the doubt. However, I really do have a feeling that the pictures lack punch, the colors really aren't that bright. Now again, if you go over to the Android Authority website, you'll find the article that goes with this video, and there you'll be able to see all of the pictures that I've taken during my testing of this phone. So what does all this mean? Well, on the plus side, we've got a nice Super AMOLED display, we've got four gigabytes of RAM, we've got 64 gigabytes of internal storage, and there's a very good fingerprint reader. Now those are good aspects of this device. However, on the negative side, we've got FunTouch OS, which is really quite different to stock Android and really is aimed at the Chinese market. There's no Google services, 4G coverage for the West just isn't there, and the camera is maybe underperforming. Now, in terms of availability, this phone will be available, first of all, in Asia, that's its primary market, and it will be available for around $550. However, that price is not yet confirmed. Now, there is a rumor that Vivo are working on an international version of both the X6 and the X6 Plus, and maybe that will solve some of the problems like stock Android and the Google Play services and the 4G coverage. So, where that version does ever come out, this phone will definitely worth be looking at for those of you in the West. My name is Gary Sims from Android Authority and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. Also, please use the comments below to tell me what you think about the Vivo X6 Plus. And as for me, I'll see you in my next video.